Hello and welcome to all of my subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, what's wrong with you? Right. Today, I want to talk about using subtitles for language learning. I want to explore how useful subtitles are for language learners and what sorts of things you should watch out for. Now, I've been looking at the research around this and the key tip highlighted in many studies is that the effectiveness of subtitles largely depends on your language learning proficiency. So stick around to the end and I'll explain the types of subtitles you should use for your learning stage. Now the question is, is watching foreign language films with subtitles useful for learning a new language? Well, the answer is yes, but. Uh, consuming native materials will assist you with your language learning, but they don't actually replace uh, using actively using the language. And their effectiveness really depends on your language skills and the language that you're using and the combination of uh, subtitles types that you use. So this research once again sort of pokes a hole in some of the language methods that tell you to keep a silent period for a long time or you only need comprehensible input to be able to speak. Uh, most of the research shows that active use is more important than passive input. So first let's talk about the different types of subtitles that you can get before we move on how to use them effectively. Now the first um, type is called an interlingual subtitle. And this is where both the audio and the subtitles are in the original language. Um, so the next one is an interlingual subtitle. And this is where the audio is in the original language and the subtitles are in the native language of the viewer. And this is the most common case for subtitles. They're mainly targeted at people who aren't learning a language, but they just want to concern, consume the content. And then finally, we have what we call inverted interlingual. And this is where the audio is in the viewer's native language and the subtitles are in the target language. Right. So those are the primary types of subtitles that got studied by uh, second language acquisition researchers. Uh, now, before we move on, I would like to mention that I'm an author, and if you like this type of content, you could really help me out and the channel by looking at my books and purchasing some. You can check them out on xgipublishing.com. I've put a link in the description, and I'll put something on the screen here. Right, so moving on. What did the studies actually find? Well, the studies f on the effectiveness of subtitles found that the benefits of inter intralingual and inverted interlingual formats helped for vocabulary learning, and they depended on your existing proficiency in the language. Now, intralingual subtitles, this is one where both audio and subtitles are in the target language, add a positive redundancy for advanced learners but beginners perform best with the inverted interlingual subtitles because it's easier to form uh, links between the languages. Uh, now, subtitles also increase cognitive load and, and users have to split their attention between the on-screen events and the text. And this can hamper your comprehension, especially for advanced learners who don't really need subtitles as a crutch. So which one do you use? Well, it depends. It depends quite a lot on the language that you're learning and your native language. So if you're an English speaker and you're learning French, then you should probably just start with the inverted interlingual, where the audio is in English, but the subtitles are in French. And then switch that and watch the same thing again with the original audio in French and the subtitles in English, right? Uh, however, if you're learning a language with a different script, like Korean or Russian or Chinese, etc., then the inverted interlingual might not be as much use because you still have a huge cognitive load trying to read the text. 
Um, so it's much more difficult for you to read the text than it would be for somebody who's, who's an English speaker but reading French or Italian. Now, the research shows that you should use both intralingual and inverted in intralingual if you're, uh, sorry, you should use interlingual and inverted interlingual if you're a beginner and move on to intralingual, which is both audio and subtitles in the target language, uh, as soon as you can. So as soon as you don't need those crutches anymore, you need to, to move on. Okay, now at the beginning I mentioned a couple other tips. Well, what's this other tip? Well, the best tip would be not to use subtitles at all. So if you have the ability to stop a program at will, you would be better off writing out your own transcript. So listening to what is said, short period, write down the transcript, and then check your work against the subtitles. Because this forces you to listen very, very closely and it makes you actively write things in the other language. So it's a much more active uh, activity, transcription, than the passive activity of just listening and watching the subtitles. All right, thanks for listening. I hope you like this sort of content. Please like and share and subscribe, and I will see you soon.